you only play one Fire Emblem game, play Awakening. If you don't play any of them, that's okay too, because they're just video games and you don't need to play them. Anyway, I was thinking of uh, playing this game to kind of show what it looks like from the perspective of someone watching someone playing video games. Because when you're playing the video game, you don't realize what you look like to outsiders, really. Knowing that you are um, watching me means I'm going to be talking with you. It makes me more interesting than someone who's just playing the game. And I am just playing this game for the sake of this video because I'm kind of sick of this game at this point, but it's the only one I have. I'm not interested in any others. So, bit by bit, I can keep going with it. Let me show you what I've got on the screen here. There are two birds. Today you're going to see what it's like to watch somebody drive. Hey, there's an airplane. They're still flying planes during the coronavirus crisis, which means not it's not doing enough in and of itself. There's another a number of other reasons, like the fact that I'm about to legally drive a internal combustion engine vehicle. But anyway, these are there are many reasons, some of which I just mentioned, why this coronavirus crisis is not going to reduce emissions enough. Uh, on itself. How do we get other governments to, the ones who are better on this issue, to, to put pressure on, to be aggressive about it and coordinated in their response to the failures, the, the countries that do not uh, have plans to enhance their ambitions, who are not doing enough now and have no plans to do enough later. We don't have time to waste. And I I believe what I say in that there is uh, nothing else to do but shut stuff down ourselves and I want others to do the same I possibly need to be doing that more often and be willing to just stay in jail but again I want it to go at least national or international so I need to make sure there's a way to forward with that I don't want to just do things on an individual level that send me to jail, and then I'm stuck in jail, and it doesn't move the needle enough. We need powerful institutions on our side, uh, because everyone's at risk from this, and so it's in our interests, those organizations' interests as well, to, to do enough against climate change. Today's lunch is chilly. Now, the question is, how do I hold this camera up so that it doesn't slide so you can watch me eat? And that's not it. This might be it, though. I think you can see me well enough there. Might want to microwave it a bit longer. And so far, this isn't really that much more spicy than medium. And, um, so, this is a book I got while I was in jail. I didn't get to it, um, because I got five books while I was in jail. And this was the last one I got, so I was reading them in order of when I got them. You know, over jail, it doesn't have that book. It's, it's good. One of the other people in jail there was reading this. And I wasn't reading it. Because I was reading the other books first. And he seemed like a big fan of it. I was going to leave it for him. But then I talked with the person who donated it. Um, and they said they'd like me to take it. And they'll send another copy. So hopefully they did that. So even if you're not in jail, it's handy. Here's the fourth book that was sent to me. Um, uh, 
this one. And he proves the person who wrote this story, Brokeback Mountain, which was turned into an Academy Award winning movie. Uh, she wrote The Shipping News, which I guess people liked. I didn't read it, but you know, I, I hear people liked it. When I talked about the book with somebody else, they heard that she wrote The Shipping News and she was like, holy smokes, I love that book. My opinion on this one, oh yeah, there's a title, is uh, it's a very, very sad book. That's my review of Barkskins by Annie Prue. From the author of the number one bestseller, The Cuckoo's Calling. It's a cormorant strike novel. So Robert Galbraith usually writes some pretty good books. Um, this one was fine. It was uh, not the best one. Managing Hospitality Human Resources, fifth edition. By these guys. This one, look at that picture, everyone's so happy to see you. This one was uh, actually good, I thought. A lot of good, interesting ideas and some templates from there you can take and apply to your business. If you can avoid turnover in your organization, business, whatever, you should, you know, really stress that. But I might want to press them on, like, where is that limit where we allow turnover? Because it, it probably varies from business to business, but I think that the emphasis that they put was um, we shouldn't allow as much as we do because it, hiring people is expensive, training them is expensive, and it's risky because if you hire the wrong people and you you know it's tough to get to lose them. But anyway, this is a good book. I uh, see the world on a globe. I don't know if it came with a globe. We have a globe, and maybe I'll show that to you at some point in the future. If you don't have a globe, it's still an expense. So if you can get a free globe, sure, go for it. But if you can't, maybe you'd better spend your money on just rent or food or achieving better climate policy as soon as possible. Let me show you what I've got on the screen here. It's a cormorant strike novel. 